Reserve Bank of India during its monetary policy announcement loosened norms for Indian banks pertaining to the real estate sector. Banks were allowed to not classify real estate loans as NPA for one year in case the project is delayed beyond the developer's control. Moody's, however, believes that such a move is credit negative for Indian banks and will only delay asset quality recognition. Shifali Malik spoke to Alka Anbarasu of Moody's Investor Services on this subject and here is a slice of that conversation. We do think that this uh, obviously gives the developers some time, uh, some additional time to work out their, their liquidity issues. But we think that the liquidity issues are more structural in the system, and that is driven by high stock of unsold inventory and the fact that the lenders to the sector, which are essentially to large extent NBFCs, are having their own funding stress. So in that context, we don't see that the liquidity or availability of developers improving. Uh, and therefore, we think that even if they get additional time, the structural issues are not getting resolved by the loosening of the uh, asset recognition norms by the RBI. Um, Alka, you think that enough is being done at this point in time? Were you uh, disappointed with the budget when it comes to a lending hand coming in for the real estate developers? Because some measures have been taken in the last couple of months, such as you know, towards last mile funding to complete the stuck projects. Um, so uh, what's your take on that? Yes, so, um yeah, there are there are efforts being taken uh, to to perhaps uh, provide last mile funding to complete the projects, but uh, but from from where we sit, it is not clear how the funding is getting flowed or which developers are going to get the benefit of that funding. Uh, it is clear that the funding providers, which are banks and NBFCs, uh, particularly the NBFCs, have their own funding challenges. So in that context, for uh, the priority for everyone is to preserve liquidity rather than fund the developers. So uh, we don't think that the situation on the ground with the real estate developers is improving. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, there are there are developers which have uh, perhaps more so in the in the luxury real estate market where uh, prices have have stayed where they have and the developers are not able to push their inventory. So at some point in time, the developers or the lenders to the developers may need to bite the bullet, move on, uh, perhaps either complete the project, sell the project at a lower price, uh, but, but move on so that, so that at least the liquidity position of the developers improve. Okay, so actually a large part of the problem lies in the liquidity uh, from NBFCs which actually dried up uh, for most of these developers and the fact that this circular from uh, RBI has come in only for banks and not for NBFCs. Do you expect a similar sort of a circular or a provision being extended to NBFCs as well? Yes, it's to be seen whether RBI extends it to, uh, to the NBFCs or not. Uh, but yeah, clearly the NBFCs actually, uh, particularly some of the HFCs as well, are uh, among the largest lenders to the to the developers. Banks, uh, perhaps to some extent, have lesser exposure to that sector. So in that context, at least the NBFCs won't get uh, advantage of this uh, one-year relief that the banks have. Um, and but but from our perspective, in fact, if this relief had come, that would have created perhaps more questions on the quality of the loans of NBFCs because then we would build in the expectation that after a year or two years, once the loans are out of moratorium, we may see new NPLs come through for them. So not having this dispensation probably means that we will um, probably see a more transparent book of these NBFCs in the next um, quarters or, or in the next year or so. Okay. So, Alka, like you mentioned that the problems are more structural in nature because of the high unsold inventory uh, that's there in the system right now. So, do you expect these problems to linger on for next, uh, let's say, one year or so? Uh, yes, indeed. That's our base case, that these problems will linger on for a year or so or even longer. Uh, the issues in the real estate sector are not new. They have been there for quite some time. Uh, the uh, uh, the the launches uh, uh, perhaps uh, uh, went ahead uh, as compared to the market dynamics. Uh, on top of it, uh, India's uh, slowing macroeconomic conditions will at least 
uh, create some dampener in even consumer spending and their capacity to perhaps uh, buy new properties. Uh, the problems are more confined in more luxury segments, uh, less so in the affordable uh, segment, but, but these issues we do expect to persist for some time. Okay, and among the banks uh, that you rate, which ones have the maximum sensitivity to the real estate sector and are the ratings at risk uh, because of uh, such exposures? So amongst the banks we rate, uh, some private sector banks like Yes Bank and Indescent have larger exposure to the sector. Uh, I would caveat that some of this exposure could be in the form of lease rental discounting, LRD, which, which we view as uh, perhaps safer as compared to just direct lending to developers. But, but when it comes to peer comparison, these two banks stand out as having much higher exposure uh, to, to the sector. On the other hand, some of our rated public sector banks have uh, modest exposure uh, to, to the real estate sector. Supreme Court has come down very hard on the government for not recovering dues from the telecom companies in the AGR case. So you think that that's, uh, that's another uh, big skeleton and is going to weigh down heavily uh, on, on the Indian banks? Uh, yes, we do think that uh, this um, AGR ruling uh, is creating uncertainty on uh, the viability of certain telecom uh, companies. And uh, we do expect, or at least we are building in downside risk to the bank's asset quality uh, from their exposure to the sector.